good day, good morning, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to this new session of Axel Tech on Air. Today, uh, we have people connected from Europe, Africa, and uh, Americas for following this uh, new session. I'm really happy to be here um, today because we are going to present some very important features of one of our really best sellers, uh, Oxygen 3000, our digital console. Uh, I'm here today with uh, Gianluca Righi, uh, that is the director of these events, uh, with uh, uh, Stefano Grego, who organized uh, the, the event, and of course, I'm very, very glad to be here today with Marco Branzanti, our CTO. Hello. Thank you, Marco, for being here and for Pleasure. being back for uh, these uh, live events. Uh, so, uh, we are going to present these new features. We were uh, really looking forward to, to, to talk about oh. them. They will be available at the beginning of uh, February for oh. uh, our customers, and uh, then we are going to explain how they can accede to them. Uh, these new features are, first of all, uh, the remote controller for the console. Right. Okay, the web configuration panel yes, and the programming of the smart buttons. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> great. So, Marco, can you please explain these three new features? Yeah, I, can you remind uh, the people that are watching that yes, if they want to of ask course. questions as well? Thank I can you. Answer so, to you them. can click on the bell here, uh, up, up here, okay, if you want to send us some questions through the YouTube chat, or you can, if you are following us on Facebook, you can use the, uh, the live chat okay. on Facebook. Beautiful. Thank you, Mark. Okay. So we're talking about our digital console. It's a broadcast console made for radios. Yeah. It's kind of a middle range console. It's good for a small radio, a medium radio, mm -hmm. or not too large radio. Why? It's a 10 fader console. And being digital, this does not mean it has 10 inputs. It has mm -hmm. a lot more inputs. Yeah. I'm going to talk a little bit about the console, just for the people who do sure. not know the product. Um, so uh, it has a lot of inputs and outputs, mm -hmm. uh, like five microphone inputs, yeah. which is quite nice, all of which with uh, uh, 48 volts for phantom, because sometimes okay. microphones do need the phantom output to work properly. Then we have seven stereo inputs, eight stereo outputs. Oh, we have one digital in and one digital out okay. for a ESCBU. And the Bluetooth. Uh, correct. <laughs> then we have the nice. This is yeah. kind of typical. <laughs> Uh, of course, there's internal routing. This means that yeah. you can assign any input to any fader that you want. Okay. And we kind of wanted to make the console, some digital consoles are very hard to use mm -hmm. because they're very different from analog consoles. So the concept here is to make it as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. So even if it is digital, you kind of have um, a way of using it very simple like in mm -hmm. the analog console. Very but you do Right, okay. and that's why probably it's so successful, yeah. okay? Then we have the nice little things. And first of all, we have a telephone hybrid built in, okay. which is really cool. You just connect your telephone line and you get your calls. Yeah. If you want more telephone hybrids, you have like up to five yeah. telco inputs okay. and outputs, which allow you to add external of telephone course, to hybrids, increase right? The, if you want yeah. to make a very okay. complicated multi-people chat with of phone course. calls and everything. And then there's a real cool option, which is the Bluetooth. Why? Well, you know, we are in the social media era. Yeah. So nowadays, people do not call in only on telephone line. They can call in, of course, with GSM. Of course. So you just connect your phone, uh, your mobile phone to the Bluetooth, mm -hmm. and it acts like a bidirectional, uh, hands-free device, but in a, okay. with like a telephone hybrid, actually. And uh, you can use that not only for GSM calls, but also for social media calls. Yeah, like, WhatsApp you know, calls. WhatsApp or, uh, and yeah, Skype. WeChat, yeah, yeah, and correct. Okay. And, and that's becoming very popular today. It's very easy to use. You just use your phone, you hook it up, and you go on air directly. Of course, it's bidirectional. So on the other side, okay. they will hear whatever is going on okay, with on your the microphone. microphones. Okay, Great. so, okay. And then the next add-on, which is really cool, is we have built-in audio cards inside. Yeah. So through the USB ports, there are two USB ports, and you have two independent stereo inputs and outputs, yeah. which you can connect to your computer. 
mm -hmm. and you can run your favorite automation software. Yeah. Better if it's an actual tech product like of the course, DJ Pro. Like DJ Pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you can so you don't need any audio card inside the computer to run your music and so forth directly uh, to the console. Okay. Oh, by the way, the Bluetooth can be used both for uh, a hands-free device, yeah. but it can also be used in a high-quality audio streaming device. Okay. So you That's could actually great. have your iPod uh, playlist and yeah, stream just it out directly. Some yeah, track. yeah okay. correct. Even though there's another nice thing, there's a mini jack on the side, okay. and that was especially made for people who like to plug in their iPod, their okay. phone, or something. And if they don't want to use the Bluetooth, they can just enter the mixer like that and use, the and cable. use it as a player. Okay. Right? Okay. So that's the basics of the mixer. The nice thing is that we have a display, mm -hmm. which is a seven-inch uh, TV monitor, on which we have the menu of the mixer, and we can actually configure the okay. mixer completely, pressing the buttons, turning the knobs, and we have all the settings. So that's okay. the typical, let's say, uh, the first approach to programming okay, the mixer. Okay, it's just a control screen, uh, just to check. To check, and also okay. to change the settings eventually to adapt the mixer. Okay. So, uh, and, and that's the primary display port. Oh. Then, and this is a really, really cool add-on, we have an HDMI port on the mm -hmm. back to which we can connect a okay, TV, a monitor. a monitor or a TV. And that's kind of nice because usually that type of port is only available in the high-end part okay. of the, con and, uh, the uh, digital consoles. While here, we just have it, we can connect the monitor like I have right now. And what do we get? Well, we get the status of the mixer. So we have our inputs, our outputs, our view meters, what's happening, what's happening to our microphones, if they're on or if they're off, and other information. And also the countdowns and count-ups, which are, you know, useful for the speakers yeah. in order to keep their timing of right course. while they're on air, live. And that's kind of typical for an on-air broadcast console. So very, right. very cool very option, useful. in my opinion, one of the nicest add-ons to the system. Okay. So now that we've, uh, we've seen... Yeah, we introduced you know, the, yeah. the product just the, a little bit for the ones that uh, correct. Still, so, do, still don't have it. Correct. So... <laughs> One other thing that I wanted to tell our viewers is that we rebuilt completely the software mm -hmm. for this console around a year, a year and a half yeah. ago. Why? Well, we figured out we wanted to put a lot of things inside, mm -hmm. but it, it, the, the development was kind of slow for, for many okay. reasons, more technical reasons. So we rebuilt the platform so from scratch just to give us more speed. And in this year and a half, we not only rewrote all the code for the previous version, okay. but we actually built in all the new cool features which you can find today. Yeah. We were very worried on how to deliver the updates to our users because it's very successful. We have hundreds and hundreds yeah, of consoles of around the world already the world. sold. Yeah. And for free, we want to give all these new features to the users. Of course. So we, we, we figured out a system to upgrade the consoles, and mm -hmm. we have three ways to upgrade them. Okay. So the well, first way is the most simple way. You just can plug in a LAN cable, a network cable yeah. to the console. You configure the IP address for the console to go out to Internet. Okay. And just with pressing a few buttons, you can download the update directly from our web servers automatically. Right. Press the button, update the firmware six minutes, and you okay. have the new firmware inside okay. with all the new really, really cool uh, features, let's say. Okay. The second way, and now we are getting into the topics for today, okay. is the web GUI, the web GUI. Okay. So... Actually, the WebGUI was introduced around six months ago as a preview with limited features. Okay. I'm going to use just yes, a browser. I have a Chrome show. browser here. I'm going to enter the password, which, by the way, is root. It's very typical for Linux system, R-O-O-T. You okay. can change the password if you want from the mixer. So what we developed around six months ago was the service menu. Mm -hmm. And the service menu allowed to make uh, backups of the configuration, restore, just for security, okay. but also up download the software from our website okay. and update the console. So you okay. can do this also just using a browser. And by the way, you can use your iPad, your iPhone, okay. or your any, uh, any tablet. The okay. 
The website is what we call responsive, okay. which <laughs> means it adapts very well according okay, to the to size any. of the device that okay, you are using. Great. Okay, And this was already developed, but mm -hmm. it was the base on which we have the new topic for today, okay. which is settings and all parameters are completely configurable by the web GUI. Okay. So if I go in settings, for example, I go in my audio section, I have my inputs, I'm going to configure my microphone, I want to configure my third microphone, for example, and here you have all the parameters which are already available on the display. So these yeah. parameters were already there, so people who know the menu on the display are very comfortable with these parameters. But now you don't need to be physically on the machine yeah, to actually do that. I think that that's what yeah, that's <laughs> in cool. 2020 uh, yeah, it, people is asking we, the most. Correct. Of course. We had to put this in. Yeah. So the nice thing is then you can create different uh, settings, create different templates and layouts of your settings, and you can save these into internal snapshots. Okay. So then you can recall whatever settings that you like according okay. to the program and the configuration. Like night settings. Right. They they setting you uh, can change change and, uh, and recall customize. your settings according to okay. the needs of the program or for example uh, this is used a lot for example for microphone channels okay. each DJ has its own yeah. compressor expander okay. His, okay, equalization and so forth so you can save uh, the, the settings and then recall them according to okay. who's talking and etc cool. and the other thing is of course having the web you can actually download these settings and make backup copies or recall okay. and so forth and it's a way of getting the data out of the mixer physically without being on the, on the mixer. Great. Okay? Great. Of course, it's a website, so this means you can use uh, into, in the internal end if you yeah. know the IP address of the mixer, but also you can use it from outside if you're in a VPN, for example, okay. it's almost the same. If you don't have a VPN, you just need to configure your router in order to uh, um, rebroadcast uh, re and forward okay. the port to the mixer, and eventually you can do this from home. Okay, okay. so qu quite nice. Perfect. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if we have any questions. No. Okay. No, okay. no questions. So let's go on. So this is the first feature I was talking to you okay. about, which is Web GUI. Now it's complete. It's actually finished. And we supply the way of setting all the, the parameters, the configuration mm -hmm. of the mixer, not uh, obligatorily through the display okay. and the front panel display, but you can but do it from your okay, web with GUI. remote access. Correct. Great. Then we have the second topic for yeah. today, which is actually a request which was made this year because yeah. it's a particular year. Everybody's working from home yeah. and they need to remote control the device, etc. Of course. So what we did, <coughs> sorry, is a Windows application. Okay which has to be installed onto a Windows computer. The computer can be a laptop, can be an i3. Any computer. Yeah, it doesn't need a lot of resources, okay. actually. And what it does, you enter the IP address of the console that you want to remote control, yeah. and what you get is this nice, cool GUI, yeah. which represents, actually, the physical console itself. That's great. And what you can do is you can lower the levels, higher the levels, so these are faders, on and off, and as you see, while I click, and the GUI, actually also the colored buttons on the console are changing also. So whatever you do on the remote controller, it actually does it also on the console. The interesting thing is that we tried to replicate as much as possible all the buttons that are physically on the console. Okay. So if you're familiar with the console, we rearranged them a little because the aspect ratio yeah, of the of monitor course, right, is a little better. Different. But you have all the information which are actually there. So you have your gains, your view meters, uh, your counters as well. Okay. All the information that was previously in the console are reported. And actually, what does it allow you to do? Well, it allows you to maybe make a live program from your home in the sense that you transport microphone and headphones yeah. using different technologies, yeah, which are called Yeah, of course, different kinds of. Yeah, we also have some products yeah. that allow you to do that, yeah. like the DJ Live Remote, which yeah. is a software application, okay? And then, of course, you can control your automation maybe with a team viewer, and you turn up and you turn down your faders exactly as if you were in the studio. Okay. That's great. Okay. I think this is a really huge yes. step. 
forward? Well, it, it, of course, remote control possibility is typical in the high-end world of audio consoles. Okay. And we felt obliged to, to do yeah. it. it the, the, but it, actually, these are kind of the last things you develop once you put everything you <laughs> yeah, wanted in there. So this tells the public that actually all the features are really in there. The console is really, really complete and working very well. So now we're kind of putting the extra accessories. Yeah, now, you know, now we are the, safer, let's say, and uh, on the gen, gen, general. general correct. And uh, so we can complete the little uh, correct. things. So this is a really, really cool uh, software. First of all, it's cool because it's free. So it's going to be available on our <laughs> website, and you can download it, you can try it. Yeah. And this as well can work in the LAN, in a VPN environment, yeah. or if you open your ports, you can okay. actually do a remote control from mm -hmm. home without any VPN directly on the internet. Okay. It needs just a one port for bidirectional communication. So okay. quite, quite nice, uh, nice thing, I think. Very nice tool, okay. yes. Very well. And David, we have can, a question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can you read it for <laughs> so me, please? So, David, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, David, for sending the, this question. Can two different remote users work on the same console? Yeah, the answer is yes. Okay. Actually, the remote control and the web interface use what we call APIs to go into the mixer. Okay. APIs can be used from any device, maybe a software automation mm -hmm. or some other type of device. Okay. Actually imagine that our VJ Pro Visio Radio yes. uses the same APIs to monitor the status of the microphones to understand when to go on okay. air. So if I open microphone number one, actually my camera okay. of the Visio Radio goes on air. And this is part of the visual radio product. System, okay. the, so we have another software which is using the same APIs to do this type of access. Okay. So there, potentially there is no limitation on the number of remote users that can okay. access the system. I have to ask the developers, usually a limitation is put if it's a five user or a 10 user, okay. but there's a lot of possibilities in order to do that. Okay, so, anyway, so we will have this information once correct. we will release the correct. final so version. So for sure yes. two can enter. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of Great. course, if I have two remote users uh, t uh, uh, changing the fader levers or doing operation, and the other GUI, it yeah. will also move. <laughs> oh, okay. So you can also check. <laughs> yes. Some someone else is. It work. is fully okay. directional and fully responsible. Oh, okay, that's so great. So the only thing is on the console. If I go up and down with the fader, the fader won't move yeah, because no, it's not a motorized <laughs> okay. fader. Okay, okay, okay. But they are already working on this bar led, and the yeah. bar led will start blinking in order to oh, tell okay. you that the fader was moved. That someone is moving. And, and it okay. will, the bar led will represent the actual uh, fader level. Okay. So we're uh, actually implementing some more new features that will be ready as soon as the application will be uploaded in February. And so whenever I move things on the remote control, all the other devices, the hardware and the software, will also move and okay. respect the same thing. That's settings. great because yeah. I'm discovering these tools with, with our <laughs> customers <Now>. today, <laughs> just right now, and they feel like in a toy's house. Uh, right, you know, right. so well, yeah, it's a first <laughs> time for most yeah, people, yeah, actually. Yeah. It's okay. very nice. <laughs> okay. So, another question from uh, uh, Televisionerea Rad. Si. Okay, thank you for the question. What about remote app for Android or iPad? Okay, uh, uh, luckily it will not be ready for February, but it is in the web in the wish list. Yeah, and it will not probably be a native app, but it will probably be simply an add-on on the web. Uh, good okay. GUI, okay. where we already have a section which is almost ready, and you will have most of the settings that you have on the remote to control, okay. not all of them, just because the application needs to be a little more simple, okay, but you course. will be able to remote control also using okay. the web browser on your okay, device. Okay, so most let's of say. the functions will be available or also in a lighter version. Version. Then, of course, there are special type of apps which are made 
uh, for Android or for the yeah. iPad, which are actually web pages, but they're kind of disguised into an app. Yeah. We could probably d simply embed the web page okay. directly into an app. We'll talk about that probably in the second half of, uh, of this year. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. So let me tell you something more. Of uh, course, with uh, pleasure. So, uh, uh, as I uh, told you, um, uh, oh, the, also inside the web, the remote controller, yeah. we have our configuration settings. That's kind of very cool. What is it exactly? Well, it's the same settings that we've seen in the web GUI, okay. but directly embedded into the GUI of the Windows okay, application. Okay, so it's like checking the, the little screen on the console. Correct, it's the, like the little screen, it's like the web GUI on my iPad, but this is also embedded in order, you don't need to open other applications or other tools to set up or change some settings on your console. That's so great. directly built in, which is kind of cool and nice. Okay? Perfect. So okay. what about the programming of the smart buttons? Yes. <laughs> Uh, I would just want to make a little story. Yeah. Imagine that this console came out around three or four years ago, yeah. and this was these buttons were there since three or four years ago. Okay. But they actually never did anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so, <laughs> someone four years ago thought yeah, that thought that they, they should. Could be. They should. <laughs> So this is to tell you that we released for the first time yeah. actually uh, uh, smart features. These were called smart keys and jingles. Okay. And the idea is would be to use the buttons to do uh, the other things rather than just things with the console. Okay. So what we did is we developed uh, them as uh, configurable buttons. Okay. So this means that you can set up a command to be sent to any device on the network. Okay. And I'll explain a little better what this means. Yeah. So, uh, for example, let's say I have my automation here. Yes. And I set up the button and I'm sending the right uh, API command yes. to the automation and I'm using the button to stop the automation Okay. And to start the automation. Okay. So uh, imagine that usually when you have an automation, you buy a keyboard, usually yes. a dedicated keyboard. Yes. We also sell them when we yes. sell our DJ Pro. And on that keyboard, you have like a jingle machine or a start button yeah. uh, or a something. Con a controller. Right. So. And if you can avoid to buy an external uh, key, smart key uh, keyboard and just you configure the buttons directly on the console, okay. which are kind of cooler, it's integrated, you know, have a lot of things around okay. and you can use it just to remote control. To manage any device on Co the network. Correct. The device, of course, must have uh, let's say LAN cap capabilities to yeah. receive commands through the network, of course. which most of the devices and most yeah, software today have. they have. Correct. And you can configure the button to do what we call a, a push button. So when you push, the command is okay. sent every time you push, or you can configure it as a toggle button, which means on or off. Okay. And then you can configure the colors of the buttons and blah, blah, blah. For example, this is a visual radio. And yes. what I've done, I've configured these buttons to switch my cameras. Okay. So I can pass to camera one, as you see it over there. Great. And then I pass to camera two. Okay. And then I go back to my jingle. <laughs> so, so imagine I'm using this as the remote control for the video mixer. Okay. And usually, like, I have a black magic video mixer down there. Usually, a remote control is a couple of thousand dollars or something yeah. like that. I'm saving that money since I only need to, 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 to switch between my two cameras. Okay, so this is just a very, very simple example of what you can do with your smart buttons. And uh, you can connect a GPI box and, for example, I don't know, uh, turn on uh, the honor lamp or okay. open the door. You, know <laughs> what I mean? you can really do whatever Anything, you want. Anything, do but, your coffee right. or But the whatever. idea is, okay, on the console, you need some buttons to do something very, very specific with third-party applications or devices now you can do it you use okay. the web UI or the remote controller to actually type in the commands you won't use the display because it's just a little you yeah, know it's annoying to it's do a letter one yeah. by one so it's much better to do copy and paste directly from that type of, of uh, uh, and that's why we actually implemented it now since now we have the tools to do yeah, our control, copy and paste okay. uh, from the web GUI or the remote controller and you can actually configure your nice and cool Perfect. smart buttons. I think this is a very very nice example of the little features that we are adding to this product yeah. and uh, okay we have some 
further questions. Yes. So, uh, Radio uh, Arad 991. Okay. Uh, thank you for sending the question. Is there any delay if you enter through remote until the final signal on air? Uh, I would say no, in the sense that mm -hmm. probably I don't really understand very well the question. So between the, the remote controller and the click of the button and the actual console, the remote commands are almost instantaneous. Okay. Uh, I would say if you're doing that from home, uh, typically, you have to sum up the ping, which is a yeah, measure. Of number. We're talking about milliseconds. Okay. okay. If we're referring to the audio signal, which I, re as yes. an example, I was saying, this depends on the codex and the technologies you are using. Okay. There is always delay to send audio from one place to yeah, another. Of course. Our DJ Live remote uses a technology called WebRTC, yeah. which is very famous for having very, very, very low latency. Day. Of course, there are other type of technologies and mm -hmm. broadcast devices which allow you to do this type of connection, lowering the delay as much as possible. But there will always be a little delay in the audio for the transport of the okay. audio signal. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, last question yep. from uh, Mugurel Enace. Thank you for sending the question. Hi, can we make separated and personalized presets for MIC EQ? Is it changeable, changeable for, each for each user and DJ? DJ? Actually, the question is very, very nice. I, uh, <laughs> but the issue is I'm not the best person to actually uh, ask the question since I yeah. know the product, but I'm not deep, deep inside uh, the product. Well, let's do it like this. Uh, I'm going to ask my support uh, department and we're going to write a uh, yeah, detailed answer, answer with some screenshots so we'll, we'll deliver. I'm sure you can do it. I was told it can be done. Yeah. I'm not really sure how I can answer how? the question okay. directly. I would need to show some screenshots. Perfect. No problem. We okay. will reply okay. later uh, okay. after talking to the Very audio good. guys. Okay. okay. So, so this was supposed to be a half hour presentation. Yes, I think we're we, just a couple of minutes early. Yes, but I perfect, think we perfect timing. Yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again, Marco, uh, for being here today and uh, for the huge, huge work you made with your team, of course, yeah. over this um, um, unit. I think that uh, this year uh, it will be one of our best sellers. Uh, for sure. Great. So thank you again. Okay. Uh, so thank you for being with us uh, today. If you have any further question, as usual, you can, you can write to sales. Okay. Oh, we have one very, very last minute question. Okay, so Jan Han, thank you for sending the question. Each remote user will have a different password to access the system. Okay. And two, the operator in the, in the studio can stop the remote connection Okay, thanks. Okay, for each user we'll have a different password. For the moment is no, there's okay. not really any user. The user is a single user with one password for the moment. Okay. But this is a cool thing I yeah. can tell my developers and actually ask if we can start and maybe, maybe we can, differentiating uh, improve the this. user. Okay. The upper in the studio can stop the remote connection. Thanks, yes, there's a button here in the menu in which you can turn off okay. the API and take the command. And take off the <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, great. So thank you again. If you have any further question, you can write to sales at uh, axeltechnology.com uh, or to my colleagues, uh, Ilaria Malucelli uh, and uh, uh, Cristiano Cinelli. Uh, I am Simona Lippi. And of course, you can also uh, write to me at any time. We will be more than glad to answer to uh, any request. Uh, thank you again, Marco. And uh, bye. See you next time. Thank, thank you. you.